I say in a vacuum, that's the smart thing to do because yeah. he's a veteran player, he's a savvy player. Mitchell and DeGene can learn from him. You get the camp, maybe somebody who's already weak at the cornerback position suffers an injury and says, oof, we need something. And you're able to get a day three pick for James Bradbury. That in a vacuum is the perfect situation. Welcome in, everybody, a Tuesday edition, starting the week off on a Tuesday here on Birds 365. I hope everybody had a fantastic Memorial Day weekend. It's a tough weekend because you mem- memorialize all the people who have given the ultimate sacrifice for our country to live in this free country. But as the ceremony I was at yesterday said, I hope you had a peaceful Memorial Day weekend, not so much a happy Memorial Day weekend. Uh, but Johnny Mac, a well, good Tuesday to you, sir. Welcome back to Bird 365 this week. How you doing, man? Yeah, and we welcome everybody back, Sander, and I'm with you. I hope everybody had a, a peaceful, and remember, you know, especially down the shore, we do a lot of work with our buddy Mike Gill, and there's a lot of uh, issues down the shore. Yeah. Man, take a step back and realize what so many people have done uh, for you to be able to have some fun, and that's what that weekend is supposed to be about. But as we get back to work, um, hundred days uh, until the start of the NFL season, and that means a hundred and one before Eagles, Packers, and Sao Paulo, Brazil. So moving we're, right we're along, close. Johnny Mac. Yeah. We're getting close. Moving right along in this off season. I want to welcome everybody in this morning. Before I ask you more about that, uh, Jason, Bruce, Devante, Joseph, Stephen. Ian, SMD Eagles, Jason A Team, Crowley, Twiz. We appreciate everybody being here this morning. Make sure you drop us a like. We are back for the week. So no more lull period on YouTube on Jacob Sports. So you guys will be seeing content all week long. And as always, we do appreciate you being here. Well, Johnny Mac, 101 days until the Eagles play some regular season football. Do you feel better or worse at this point in the offseason than you did on your flight home from Tampa Bay? Uh, well, flight home, I feel better. Uh, and that's just a natural uh, matter. Yeah, I guess you're at a low. So maybe maybe yeah. a week I, after I mean, the I, I yeah. thought you were going to go, how, am I higher than I was at this time last season? That's or, a good question, or, too. Or, and I, I'd say a little bit lower. Uh, I thought, you know, they, they had a – obviously, they were coming off a Super Bowl uh, appearance in an NFC championship. So there were, they were obviously a very good team. The question, Super Bowl hangovers and all that kind of stuff, playing so late and all that kind of stuff, changing of the coordinators, a lot of question marks. But I think everybody looked at that team and said, especially on the NFC side of the bracket, they were going to be in a good position again. Uh, and they were right up till they weren't uh, at 10 and one. So, I, I would say not as high if you want to go back that far, but much higher if you want to come back from the flight home from Tampa, which was a disaster uh, of epic proportions. Um, so maybe that's a little bit too low of a bar. Uh, very top-heavy team. Wrote about that over the weekend. Um, you know, the starting 22, uh, 11 on offense, 11 on defense looks – Certainly um, top five in the NFL. Um, and then you start talking about the depth at certain positions and a, and a wrong injury. And as Doug Peterson would always say, multiple injuries at the wrong position could really, really affect you. And that goes, uh, injuries are obvious. That We should all stipulate it. That can ruin anybody's season from Kansas City on down. And it starts with quarterbacks. It always starts with quarterbacks. So that's kind of built into the whole thing. You have to be healthy. Uh, But the Eagles aren't as deep as you probably would like them to be on paper. Yeah, it's an interesting question. I mean, everybody's all excited going in with with Saquon, but you did lose Kelsey. You lost Cox. They're coming off that bad year. Uh, I mean, you could maybe argue the roster is not as good as it was going into last year, even coming off that Super Bowl run. Uh, but we'll get into that. John, in an effort to make our listeners the most knowledgeable Eagles fans 
in the world, we must hit on the number change. <laughs> I know you hate numbers, but we will make our listeners the most knowledgeable Philadelphia Eagles fans in the world. Very important. So, very yeah. important. Josh Sweat switches his number again. He's now wearing number 19, which is a goofy, goofy number for an edge rusher. But I guess it doesn't matter if he produces. And Tanner McKee is going to switch over to number 16. Will Greer was wearing 16. Uh, no change from him yet, but we will see what he dons today. But I had to hit on that. That was the one thing that did happen this weekend. So Josh Sweat switching <laughs> to number 19, which is which is a little goofy if you ask me. Well, they changed the rules a couple of years ago you know, where you could wear. I, and I, I didn't like it at all because you got people all over the place wearing, wearing these weird numbers. Yeah, I even thought Hassan Reddick in seven was kind of weird. It, it yeah. grew on me. I got used to it, but it, it was. Yeah, and people first. get used to it. It's not that big of a deal. But yeah, I mean, for whatever reason, we'll talk to Josh eventually. I'm sure there's something uh, in this background that uh, involves 19. So we'll see why he wanted to change but uh you know the nfl it's speak of speaking of goofy rules um when they, when they changed the rule and they allowed um um more liberal use of, of of numbers a lot of especially skill position players wanted to move numbers and and they wanted to go in those you know from one through nine or now zero through nine. They all wanted those types of numbers. And the NFL was forcing them, forcing them to buy out the in-stock jerseys. So, um, right. so they didn't lose words, money on, on the yeah. switch number. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, if you had 200,000 jerseys sitting in the fanatics warehouse somewhere, you had to buy them yourself to change numbers. Um, always the penny pinchers, the NFL, but yeah, he's changing the 19. So if that's excites people, but you know, I always warn the Jersey people stop with the jerseys buy buy throwbacks because people are going to change numbers. They're, they're going to change numbers. And this is, well, Josh as a rookie was 75 and then he moved to 94. He didn't have a lot of cachet. So you take what you can. And obviously, like 94, now he's going to 19. Um, yeah. And so, and and Quinion Mitchell, because I know first-round picks, uh, I'm going to guarantee that just pause, pump the brakes on 30, um, you know, before you, you invest in that um, and see what happens, at least as you get closer, maybe you get a season out of it. And then it might be they like a number that uh, with an entrenched veteran, and maybe that entrenched veteran eventually retires. A lot of a lot of moving, uh, and I blame Michael and Kobe for all this, really. Because, and let's be honest, two of the greatest basketball players of all time. But let's be honest. They did that to make more money with merchandising. It, it worked. Can only there, send, oh, it, it, it worked. worked yeah. It worked. <laughs> so it worked perfectly. But I, I'm just saying it wasn't, you know, anything more than that. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Now, Kobe, namely, has two iconic numbers, eight and twenty-four. Uh, but you're right. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. As someone put in the chat, if Josh Sweat gets 19 sacks, I could care what number. Uh, he's wearing. He well, I'm not getting 19. I, I don't care. <laughs> I, I, you know, and Ruben Frank is the one who said it, and I said Ruben hit it on the head. I get, uh, you know, I'm covering the game, and if you ask me, people get hyped up. Are they wearing green? They're wearing black. Are they this that? 15 minutes after the game is over, I can't even tell you what they were wearing. That's a reporter thing, though, John, because fans do love it. I get it though. I get where you're coming from. You're reporting on the day, you know, the, those those little things don't matter. But I will say they do matter to fans. That's why oh, of course. we talked about the money. That's why that's why Jeffrey Lurie brought back the Kelly Green. Fans went nuts for Kelly Green. They wanted the Kelly Green merchandise. Oh yeah, you know? Jody and I had a, a a big discussion on that. Yeah, I mean it's great if you like it. It's great, but understand they're picking your pocket. That's all. Yeah, so I'm I am with you though in that if you're gonna buy a jersey, your best best going with an old school or Randall Cunningham or somebody that that's an Eagle legend that no longer will be changing numbers or changing teams or whatever uh, the case may be. Johnny Mac, week two of OTAs this week, 
Uh, one, just give us the full schedule for the Eagles and then give us when <clears> you're <throat> going to be down there and, and able to see your second OTA. <clears throat> Uh, they're back today. Uh, they're going to have an on-field OTA, not open to reporters. Uh, then they'll take the, the day off. There's a cluster of three, and then they're going to be on the field uh, Thursday and Friday. Reporters, not official, but most likely Thursday. Um, the reason they 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 rarely um, – <clears throat> They rarely, when they when they have these OTAs, and you only have to open one of them uh, of the cluster to reporters. It's usually the second one because the first one, in this case, you have Memorial Day weekend. Everybody's off, and you're coming back. Right. And it's not what the Eagles call a green practice, which is a full go, which at this time of the year is, you know, it is what it is, but. Still, they they have differences in practices, and this is more of a ramp up because of the long weekend. And then Thursday will be a green practice uh, when they do the most, and that's most likely not official, but most likely one where we will be uh, allowed. <coughs> excuse me, allowed in there this week. Yeah, so well, they're back at they're back at a, for an OTA today, and then Thursday, Friday, <laughs> we're hoping Jenny Mack is able to get down there. On Thursday, get some more insight. I thought a lot came of the, you know, a lot of people joke about it, how long you guys will be able to go down there. But, you know, we learned a lot about the team from just you guys being there one time compared to what we knew before. So sometimes I think fans take reporters and what you guys do for granted. It's nice to have you guys down there. It's nice to see what Johnny Mack is seeing, what all the reporters are seeing. Um, so I'm hoping to, that John is able to do that again on Thursday. and. And then coming up, John, next week, next Tuesday to Thursday, is it? Is the mandatory mini? Yeah, camp? mandatory mini camp. Three full days. Every single one is open uh, to reporters. So that's one, and that'll be the first one, um, first mandatory mini camp since uh, Doug Peterson uh, hasn't been yeah. one in the Nick Sirianni era. Um, number one is James Bradbury going to be there? That's yeah, that's the biggest the question, and we'll get yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of ways you can look at it. I remember going back to Evan Mathis um, in the Chip Kelly era was, you know, a heck of a guard for this team and, you know, was having some issues. And that was when the Eagles moved on. At that point, they traded him um, because they didn't, you know, you don't want an unhappy guy. It's easy to say play out the clock with Bradbury. I say in a vacuum, that's the smart thing to do because right. he's a veteran player, he's a savvy player. Mitchell and DeGene can learn from him. You get the camp. Maybe somebody who's already weak at the cornerback position suffers an injury and says, oof, we need something, and you're able to get a day three pick for James Bradbury. That, in a vacuum, is the perfect situation. But it's real. it's real life. Do you want unhappy people around the workplace? He knows – the writings on the wall. Um, so it's a, it's a lot easier said than done when you say, and James is a professional. And when you say, Oh, you're under contract, you know, just come in and do your job. That's, you know, that's pie in the sky. That's easy stuff. Look around the rest of the league. It's really difficult, these types of situations. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Eagles handle it. John, I want to give you a hypothetical. If, if let's just let's just assume for a second the Eagles knew that James Bradbury would return to his 22 form. I'm not saying that's going to happen. It's a it's a coulda woulda shoulda type scenario. But if they did, even then, would they want him back on the roster? Like well, I, I don't I, I don't I, think his play I, has anything I, to do with this decision. I mean, I, you know, if they if they could guarantee that, they wouldn't have drafted two corners. I mean, <clears throat> so if you want to, rewind I think they still might have. I mean, Bradbury's 30, Slay's oh, they, 33. They probably would have drafted one. Um, and even though, you know, maybe, depending how the board, and the board fell the way yeah, the right. board fell. So, yeah, they're probably going to draft a corner. But, yeah, they're definitely not drafting two. Um, I mean, he was a second-team All-Pro. Um, you know, Quinion Mitchell may have a good NFL career, a really good NFL career and never be a second-team All-Pro. That is hard to do. 
Um, the all pro teams are both conferences, minimal numbers, obviously talking about four corners, not even four corners because it goes by boats. So it could be three some years. Um, if guys really stand out, um, it is really, really difficult to do. So if, if you're going to guarantee that level of play, the, the cornerback concern isn't nearly as great as it was. So that's kind of a difficult question to answer. Um, but, what, you know, Mike, Mike Gill and I talk about that a lot. How many guys had career years in 2022? And it was just all over the defensive side of the football. And and we said it throughout that offseason. It's very unlikely, you know, even if Jonathan Gannon came back and was the DC and you had the same scheme and it didn't go wacky with Sean Desai and Matt Patricia. And if you manage to work things out with CJ Gardner Johnson and you manage to bring TJ Edwards back, the assumption of them having the same year they had previously with 70 sacks. Um, the number one pass defense. It's almost impossible. Yeah, it wasn't going to happen again. It wasn't. I mean, career years are career years for a reason. So, uh, yeah, James has been playing for a long time. That was his best season. Um, he's had other good seasons. And I've been on record saying I think he'd have a bounce back season under Vic, but at his age, it's, you know, probably the right time for the Eagles to move on. Let's get to our first commercial break. We have a good, uh, two good guests planned for everybody today. So we have Bill Colarulo, 97.5 The Fanatic, formerly Jacob Sports, when he did his Philly Sports Power Hour. I know a lot of you guys in the chat like the Philly Sports Power Hour. So we'll have Bill Colarulo up in hour number one uh, this morning, coming up at 8.20, so after the commercial timeout. And then in hour number two, we'll have Jeff Kerr. Jeff Kerr will dive into the OTA week two with us, and we will break down some position battles, break down what we're thinking going into week two. Just as Johnny Mac mentioned at the top, 101 days until the Eagles are playing regular season football. Fans, if you can believe it, that's not that far away. 101 days goes by in the blink of an eye. It already feels like it's – I mean, we're already, you know, north of 101 days past the end of the season. So we're well through halfway of the offseason, and we will be back before we know. Let's hit our first commercial break. Coming up next, Bill Colarulo joins Johnny Mac and I on Birds 365. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify. <laughs> 